مالنتي اللي بعد يوحى مسجد كي من التيمية مقالة كولومبوس هكاسو عدا شيروينا من مؤتمر سنة الله وقو سوق بان قابيي مامول كمسجد كي من التيمية علماء الدين كلا دوان اوكا كلا يميد وقوية كا امريكا يوروب ايا عربها كان قيب قلا يم مؤتمر كان ايا سوچي دي محاضروين كلا دوان او ايكا قهل لين حاقو الوالد كا درس وناقا حاقا ايا عرورتو والد كا كلا يهين اسلام كا ايا نولش كقيب قال يا شو أبدًا دلني رأى يا سقط تدر ود جيسنا يا عشرة ذي محاضرين كاي علماء السوتش يدين يين ما دام عين تبدن كوب حيين لقد إنجليش كاتاس وأسهل سا فهم كموضوع يدا تسأل وين كي يتلم معها أي علماء الدين كقصو قاتين محاضرين كا دلني رأى إداد ود كير تهيل باتن شركة يا أم قدت رضا أبدًا إدادك صوحة ذي مؤتمر كان تاسنا وحي موجني سار رجدا يقف فعلها مستقبل كشيل كسوكريا أو لا يسكر راعي إن يجو وجهه يعقب ذك الدون أي هذا نأهمية يربيتان بالعرن وهيان برشاد الدين تودا مؤتمر كان أصو عنده أنا مدة صدح مع الموضة أي أم وقدم سنة كان كوسو بيج ما يحل أيدك مسلمين تاه يكون الوضع مظهر هير قلبتك جارهان أمريكان كاي سوف وتصارين مرحلة ده هو أنت لأنجل يجي بتقبك الدينات يمد كرقان أي عروتة هل يدو واحد برشاد كدي مركي وحرق جوستي أما اللي قد نقن قال يجو بالله بدن أمريكان كا شرع ماشا كسارية إن والدين تو أي حق اللي يهين كورقبك أوبد كودا معلمين تونا أي سينا يانا من باري كران أرديدا عشر اللي حري رغو ملود نمو يهين المهو أو شاكتو مدكي أو دونو لب يددك وحانا عرمهان أي ولاع بلارنكو أبورين والدين فربضان أو مسلمينا قارهان نصو ماليدا The first lecture for us is our sheikh Usually everybody calls him sheikh Yahya Sufi, but to me, he is a dictator, a sheikh, a dictator, Yahya Sufi, all right? And the reason why I say this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate every single one amongst you, especially those who attain knowledge with higher status. So in respect to that, and I hope I did not put the shaykh on blast, inshaAllah ta'ala. So, bi-idhnihi, I would like to welcome him, inshaAllah ta'ala, with open arms. Faliyatafadl, mashkoor al-ma'jura. And the topic that he will be touching upon will be the Muslim's stance on the trials and ways to safeguard against them. People have so many things to say when it comes to tragedies, when it comes to hardship and difficulties, but let's look in this world. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this world, He didn't intend this world to be a place of peace, a place of prosperity, a place of happiness and joy. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has combined both. There's good times and there's tough times, right? There's difficulties and hardship. There is, you know, good and prosperity. Both are there. But imagine, sisters and brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind, we sitting here today and listening belong to Jannah. That's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning placed our forefather, our father Adam and our mother Hawa, Eve. Both of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow them to live in Jannah for a certain time. And in Jannah, you don't feel difficulties, you don't feel the hardship, you don't have to worry about anything, no agony, no pain, no nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He plays them Jannah, He says to Adam, إِنَّ لَكَ أَلَّا تَجُوعَ فِيهَا وَلَا تَعْرَى وَأَنَّكَ لَا تَظْمَأُ فِيهَا وَلَا تَضْحَى You're not going to feel no hardship in this Jannah. But when they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just by committing one sin, just one, how often do we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So much so that we can't even count how often we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because of one disobedience, Adam has been driven out of Jannah to this dunya. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Adam when he comes and sends him to this dunya, اِهْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَىَ فَلَا يَظِلُّ وَلَا يَشْخَىٰ So he comes to this dunya, so the dunya now you leave, you and I leave, is a place for test and trial. Hadith is dealing with five different things. I'll take about four minutes on each one but a khutbah can be given for each one of them. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in this dua, 
that is specifically being highlighted for the women, but everybody should memorize his dua. He said, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from having a neighbor who is a problem, a ja, a su, a bad neighbor. And I seek refuge in you from having a wife who causes me to become gray before my time. I'm not an old person. I be 30, 35, 40 years old, but the woman that I'm married to, because of her bad akhlaq, her bad adab, she causes me, due to stress, anxiety, and worry, to become white and old and wrinkled, due to stress. And I seek refuge in you from a child, a son, number of sons, daughters, who they become a lord over me, a rabb. The child that I gave birth to becomes my rabb. I'm the mother, but the lady or the girl, the boy that came out of my womb is here in Columbus, Ohio, treating me as if I'm the child and they are the parent. He said, number four, I seek refuge in you from money that would be a cause of punishment for me. And number five, and the last one, I seek refuge in you from a friend, a Khalil Makir. Protect me from the person who I take as a friend, but they're a treacherous friend. I have a friend who is a treacherous friend. That friend, his eyes look at me and they appear to be pleased with me. He's always smiling at me, skinning and grinning in my face acting as if he's really my friend. But in reality, his heart despises me. If he sees anything good that I do, he buries it, doesn't want to acknowledge it. But if he sees a mistake or something bad for me, then he broadcasts it and he wants people to know about it. There's a tremendous hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it is impregnated with a lot of benefits, a lot of fawai. As I said, Every Muslim who is aqil, every Muslim who wants to be hakim, he doesn't want to be ignorant, foolish, should pay attention to this dua. Learn it before tomorrow, inshallah. As it relates to the issue of dua, I wanted to do an introduction about the importance of dua. But I really don't have any time. I just have to go right into the explanation of these issues. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sought refuge in Allah from a bad neighbor. The neighbor in Al-Islam, whether you realize it or not, we have a masuliyah towards the neighbor. Yes, the Prophet said that Jibril used to come to him a lot of times and used to tell him, Ya Muhammad, take care of the neighbor. Ya Muhammad, remember the neighbor. Ya Muhammad, the neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor. He would always keep coming to him and mentioning the haq of the neighbor. He said he came to me so much telling me about the neighbor that I actually thought that Allah was going to allow the neighbor to inherit from someone. So if a person were to die, there is in the Quran, those people have been mentioned who inherit from the deceased, from the mate. Hurrimat alaykum, all of those people who you, or Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al-Nisa has mentioned, all of those people, if the dead person dies, the mother, the father, the husband, the wife, the child, who gets the money and how much they get? The name is not mentioned from amongst them, but he said, Jibril came to me so much, I thought the neighbor was going to be allowed to inherit. The Muslim who is aware and is conscious, he or she knows that the neighbor has rights upon them. This Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, one time there was a mother, she was best, breastfeeding her baby. While breastfeeding the baby, what happened? A guy looked great, looked fresh, looked strong, looked rich. So she said, Ya Allah, make my baby just like this man. Ya Allah, make my baby just like this man. Rich, powerful, known handsome, well off. So the baby, baby, he looked to the other side, looked at the man, said, Ya Allah, don't make me like him. What? He's a baby. 
a month old, give a full blown sentence, proper grammar, no accent. Allahu Akbar. So the mom was like, What? So, anyhow, she moved on, she kept breastfeeding him. Then there was a lady, a lady that was getting hit, a lady people were cursing at. You say about judging people and stuff, right? They're cursing the lady. They told her, Sarakti, Zanayti, you have stole, you have committed haram. So then she says, Hasbi Allah wa ni'm al wakil. Allah is my ultimate trust. Allah will take care of me. That's what the lady was said. So the mother, she's looking at this. What did she say? Oh Allah, don't make my son like this woman. Don't, Ya Allah, don't make my son like this person. So the baby, what did he do? He stopped breastfeeding. He turned to the side, looked at the lady. He said, Ya Allah, make me like this woman. In terms of akhlaq, in terms of iman, in terms of deen. So then the mom tells the baby, this is a sahih, authentic hadith. She tells the baby, she said, what's the matter with you, you bald head? Because he was a very baby, I'm not no hair. So she said, when I asked Allah to make you like this man, who's so handsome, so rich, so powerful, you said, yeah, Allah, I don't want to. When I asked Allah, don't make my son like this woman, she's being hit, accused. I don't want you to ever be accused and smacked and commit theft and commit haram. Why did you say that? So look what the baby said, ready? He says, mom, the guy that you wanted me to be like, he's a volume. He's an oppressor. He's a tyrant. You see him in the street, amazing. You see him on the street, you're like, I wish he marries my daughter. You see him on the street, you say, I wish all kids were like him. This guy is a munafiq, this guy is a hypocrite. Allahu Akbar. Zalim. You don't know what he does at home. As for that lady, she was being accused. People spoke trash about her, but she's a mu'mina and she's innocent of all the accusations. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, how we human beings, we react and how Allah knows the hearts. Wallahu alimun bidati. Right, sudur. Subhanallah. So this is one of the babies that also spoke that we learn from this akhlaq. Wa salli allahumma ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'in. All praises to Allah Jalla Jalala. Who has given all of us a, a new contract on life this morning when we woke up. And who alhamdulillah by his grace had permitted us to see the nightfall tonight. And we pray we have a new contract tomorrow. Because everything that happens, happens by the permission of the contract between us and Allah Jalla Jalla. When the sun comes up tomorrow, its contract is renewed. When you wake up, your contract is renewed. When the branch, the leaf on a branch, on a tree, any given part of the world, is still uh, green and wet, it still has that contract from Allah Jalla Jalla. I will build on to what Shaykh Yahya said, and that is, First of all, there's nothing wrong with being a minority in any one place or at any given time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And every place, every piece of real estate, every land belongs to Allah Jalla Jalla. Whether it's in the east or the west or the north or the south. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لِلَّهِ مَقَالِيدُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah does what He wants. يَفْعَلُ ma yasha, يَخْلُقُ ma yasha. He creates what He wants. He does what He wants. He makes what He wants happen. Every spot belongs to Him, Jalla Jalalu. So us Muslim minorities here in the West, the West is not another foreign planet. It's part of the planet that we all share and live in. So to begin with, the West is not some foreign place that does not belong to Allah, number one. And number two, there, it's okay to be a minority as long as you are on the haq, as long as you are on the right path. And yesterday here, I said that one of the greatest fears that I have, Shiyukh, of us Muslims in the West, is that we seem to be getting a very shaky and loose relationship with the concept of, of the right path. We seem to be embracing so, or at least in the in the in the in the in the space and the scope of wanting to be inclusive, we seem to really be shaky on this is right and this is wrong, this is good and this is bad. I'll say that over and over and over. As long as we're on the right path, there is nothing wrong with being a minority.